Welcome back to Joe's Computer Museum. Today we'll take a look at the Nishida Radio DVI adapter for the Apple IIgs ROM 3. Warm up the CRT, it's time for another episode. The Apple IIgs has a peculiar analog video output. To get the best video from the computer, you usually need the original monitor, but it's too based and will fail eventually. As seen on a previous video, there are ways to convert the analog output to something a bit more universal. But since these methods are analog to analog, the conversion isn't always perfect. Wouldn't it be great if we could get a direct digital output from the Apple IIgs? Well, now there's a way. Koichi Nishida of Nishida Radio has designed and built a device that fits right over the graphics chip in the ROM 3 Apple IIgs, lifting the video signals from the chip and creating a full digital output that is compatible with modern DVI, DisplayPort, and HDMI monitors. His small batch handmade adapters are a work of art, and the output they provide is a sight to behold. But enough talk, let's open it up and see it in action. Alright, so let's take a look at what's inside the box, shall we? Wow, this, uh, this package is it's a piece of art. I mean, Nishida-san really, you can tell that he put a lot of care and time and love into this project. I mean, look at how he, how he put this package together. I mean, you know, showing Japan to the United States, the shipping direction. I've seen other pictures uh, where on the internet of where people have received these in like other countries like Brazil and even puts the, you know, the country flag on there. It puts his nice logo on there and everything. You, you can tell that Nishida-san really does care about what he's doing here and almost considers, considers his work kind of like an art. So uh, let's go ahead and open this up and see what's inside. I cheated here. I cut this. <laughs> I cut this ahead of time to not bore you with package opening here. But even too, I mean, look at the box. The box is a custom-made cardboard box. He put this together specifically to fit this for shipping. I mean, that level of a detail, that that attention to the process is is really quite inspiring. So let's see what we got here. What's what toys do we have? So this here, uh, this is the adapter itself. And there it is in all of its beautiful glory. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward custom chip and some electronics um, and dip switch settings and all of that. And if you flip it over here, you've got the, the uh, connector on the back. Now this slips over the video or the graphics chip in the Apple IIgs ROM 3 and it picks up all the signals right off the, uh, right off the chip. Uh, and then the uh, the custom the uh, custom firmware he's put in here, you know, manually just it takes that and converts it into a DVI signal. This is going to be our cable, I presume, that goes out to our DVI header. So let's take a look. Is that what this is? This is probably our DVI header. It is. There is our DVI header, of course. So you know, this goes out to the uh, back of the Apple IIgs. This gets its signal, and uh, yeah, you connect that together. Oh, look at that. Look at that. He even put the logo right there on the DVI header. Isn't that awesome? Well, now that we have this uh, all, all unboxed, let's take a look at uh, installing it in the Apple IIgs. All right, so let's get this installed. I uh, have all my pieces and parts ready to go. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is to get the power supply out of the way because what we need to get into is underneath it. So we'll do that first. That's pretty simple. You just have to press back on this, uh, pull back on this clip here, and then the thing slides right out of the way. I'm just going to kind of lay him very gingerly up there, and then we have to get the power adapter or the power connector out. So we just tug on that very gently, and it's up and out of the way. So here is the chip that we need to install that on. This is the VGC or video graphics chip, I guess that's what that's called. And uh, we put the adapter right on top of it. So pretty easy. You just take this guy, lay it right on top. This is the back, so you need to make sure that's oriented correctly. So let's see if I can do this. My ethernet cable's in the way a little bit. Okay. Pardon me while I do this. And there it is, installed right on top of there. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to take the, uh, the uh, DVI adapter here and shove, or DVI adapter connector and shove it out the back. Now, I want to put it right through this guy here. So let's go ahead and get this removed. And we'll pull this through the back. 
Uh, work with me. There we go. Okay. Now that that's out, then we can take this and put this on. Of course, this is keyed. It's got a keyed, uh, keyed side on it, so you can't put it in the wrong way. So you put that on there. And that's all there is to that. Now, the last thing you want to do is read the instructions for the specific model of this you have. I've got one of the newer newer firmware models, which tells us that we should have switches 1 and 2 in the up position. Obviously, you want to get this done before you put the power supply back in, because you can't really get to it very easily with the power supply uh, in the way. You might be able to sneak in there and get those. So let's go ahead and put the power supply back in place, which goes, let's see here in this general direction. Power supply is plugged in. Flip it around. And ratchet that into place. And that is all there is to it. Now all we've got to do is set the computer up, turn it on, and see what the results are. All right, so we have the moment of truth. Did I install the adapter correctly? Will it work right? Let's find out. Wow, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Let's let this boot up and take a look at the operating system once it's all the way up. And because of the card I have in here, it doesn't take that long. There we go, GSOS in all its beauty. So, we'll just go into colors here just to see what those look like. Those look pretty nice. And yeah, it works. Uh, I can tell you, it's hard to see from your angle, but I can tell you from here, these pixels are absolutely crystal clear and super sharp. But, since you can't see it from your angle, let's zoom in close up and take a look. So here we are zoomed way in and you can tell those pixels are crystal clear and super sharp. I'm telling you, he did a really good job at designing this board. Here's one of the big things here. Uh, look around the mouse cursor. You can see no artifacting around the cursor. I mean, it doesn't move anything around. It is just spot on perfect. Now I'm going to show you another close up of the Gonbez 8220 so you can see with comparison how well that uh, Nishida-san's uh, adapter really does. And here we have the close-up of the Gonbez 8220 solution. Uh, you can tell I'm not quite as crisp on those pixels. And uh, watch when I move the mouse cursor around. See around the, f the below the file menu and some of the pixels on the file menu there? Um, yeah, it does this weird, uh, this weird shifting because it's doing some sort of um, scan doubling or something when it does this magic when it's converting the analog uh, uh, analog output of the 2GS into you know a VGA uh, VGA output and uh, look at the lines down here you know nowhere near as crisp because it can't get perfect clocking it blends those lines out a little bit doesn't do quite as good a job as uh, as the Nishida radio solution so now that we've taken a look at that Let's take a look at uh, how the Nishida Radio uh, option does in different graphic modes compared to the Gonbez. And hey, we'll even throw in a regular old TV to see what that looks like.
couple of minor issues with the design. The first is the connector. It ships with a piece of tape to tighten the tolerance to help it stay in place, but the adapter can still pop off if you're not careful. Also, the external DVI header doesn't come with mounting hardware, so it just hangs out the back. If you want to mount it to the rear panel, you'll have to engineer your own solution. Here's what one of my subscribers, Cooper, came up with. I thought it was pretty ingenious. These points, however, shouldn't dissuade you from buying one if you're so inclined. Just be aware of them. For technical reasons, this adapter only works with a ROM3 Apple II GS, so be aware of that too. Nishida-san also makes these in small batches, once a month or so. So if you want one, you have to watch his Facebook page like a hawk or you'll miss your chance. In my opinion, this is the pinnacle of video preservation for your Apple II GS, if you have a ROM3 model, that is. It's easy to install even for the novice and works instantly when you preset the dip switches. The output is absolutely gorgeous and will work on modern monitors, allowing you to enjoy your Apple II GS for years to come. Well, that's all for today's video. While you're here, check out some of my other videos, and remember, 8 bits are all you need.